To follow along with the written version of this pattern and download the interactive PDF, use the link on screen now in the description below or by going to clubcrochet.com slash pumpkin. Hey there, it's Louie, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to crochet perhaps the easiest crocheted pumpkin out there, and that is because it's made with almost no sewing at all. In fact, the main part of the pumpkin has no sewing at all. The only thing is you can attach an optional leaf to the top, but it's not even sewing really. It's just attaching it to the top. It's very, very easy. I've designed a few crocheted pumpkin patterns in the past that have not been as beginner friendly. So I really wanted to take the time to design one that is not only super fun to crochet, very customizable, you can make it larger with a larger vine and stuff, but also it's super duper beginner friendly uh, designed with complete beginners in mind. So I really hope you like this pattern. A few things to get to before we talk about the materials. Uh, the first thing is if you are a complete beginner and you need some extra additional help, I have a Discord channel and a Facebook group that I'll link to in the description of this video that are a great place for beginners to go to ask for extra help. You can share your projects there um, and just make some new crocheted friends they're really cool. I think you'd really, really like it. Um, we also have a complete uh, beginner series called Crocheting 101 that I'll link to uh, in the description as well. It's great for complete beginners. Uh, and yeah, it's a, it's a super good series to, that I'm really, really proud of. Also, uh, we will have time codes in this pattern so that you can quickly jump around to different parts of the pattern. I'll put links to that in the description and in this time bar at the bottom. And then finally, there is a left-handed video version of this available. So if you are a lefty, I highly suggest you check out that version of that, this pattern instead um, as it's designed for left-handed crocheters. Okay, well, without further ado, let's talk about all the materials that you're gonna need to crochet this here little pumpkin. For this pattern, you're going to need the following materials. Now I'm using all worsted weight yarn in 100% wool, but what's really important about the yarn that you're using is not the size of the yarn, but the type of the yarn. You want to use yarn that is squishy or some kind of like a little bit el elastic. So I don't really like using 100% cotton for this pattern because it's not really as squishy as wool. So that's why I'm really, I really like using 100% wool. As far as the size of the yarn goes, that doesn't really matter. You can use worsted weight yarn like me, or you can use bulky yarn or even t-shirt yarn to crochet this pattern. And if you do, you can make your pattern bigger and bigger. You can make your giant, like actual size pumpkin if you use bulky yarn, perhaps. Um, or you can make it really tiny by using embroidery uh, thread instead. It's whatever you want to use, just make sure that the two colors of yarn that you're using uh, are the same kind of yarn, or at least very close to each other. As far as colors go, we're gonna be using our main color orange, and that's gonna be for the body, and then green for the stem, leaf, and vine. For the crochet hook, try to make sure that your crochet hook works really well with the size of yarn that you choose to use for this pattern. For me, because I'm using worsted weight yarn, I'm gonna be using a size G four millimeter crochet hook. It's my favorite yarn, uh, crochet hook to use for worsted weight yarn, which if you're a fan of this, uh, this crochet channel, you'll probably know that. I really like using a size G hook. You also need a darning needle. Um, that's really just for sewing these parts together or for sewing the leaf on, but you can actually make this pattern without a darning needle if you just use your crochet hook instead. You also need a pair of scissors and some stuffing. You do not need very much stuffing at all. In fact, this is enough stuffing for this entire pumpkin, so you really don't need much stuffing at all for this pattern. Um, that's because you want to keep it a little bit less than stuffed so that you can squish it together a little bit better. Okay, well, before we get into the pattern, if you like this uh, video and you like this crochet channel, um, there are a few ways you can help support this channel if you're interested. The first free way is just like and subscribe down below. Please, it helps uh, get this channel more viewers and it just really helps this channel grow and make more crocheters. So please like and subscribe down below. We also do live crochet alongs every week. We're gonna be doing a live crochet along for this pumpkin uh, nearer to the end of the month. So if you want to crochet along with us, make sure to hit the little bell icon so you don't miss it when we come out with new live streams. And if you'd like to support monetarily, consider a Club Crochet membership. With a membership, you get access to the full library of tutorials. We have a whole bunch of Halloween-themed patterns, actually. And we'll talk more about what that means at the end of this video. Um, but if you like Halloween patterns, consider a Club Crochet membership. Again, we'll talk later. Um, these are my finger puppet Halloween characters, which I'm super big fan of. But again, we'll talk more about that later. Okay, well... 
That is more than enough. Let's get hooking and start crocheting our pumpkin. We're actually gonna start by making our stem here with our green yarn. Okay, so we're gonna be starting with our green yarn. Uh, let's get going. Now, like I said in the beginning, this is very beginner friendly, so I'm going to take it very, very slow for complete beginners. Use the time codes to quickly jump back and forth if you're having, a, uh, you're like, man, this guy's going way too slow. You can also speed it up by using the little, the little gear icon in the corner. We're gonna start by making a magic loop. Now, if you want a complete tutorial on the different kinds of magic loops, I do have one for that, but this is my favorite way to make a magic loop. Start by taking the yarn facing downwards towards the ground with the tail end there and hold it down with your middle and thumb finger like so. Go around your index finger and then back around your middle finger and then back around your index finger again, but create an X on the front and then go down the back and two parallel lines on the back. So you have two parallel lines on the back and an X on the front. Now take this tail end and this end attached to the ball Place it between your ring and pinky finger and close it in, and that's going to keep everything held tight and together. Now, once you have this with the X on the front, two parallel lines on the back, we're going to take your crochet hook, face the yarn backwards towards you so those two parallel lines are facing you. Take your crochet hook and go under the first bar, yarn over the second bar, and pull that under the first one like that. Now, loop it around like that, and you'll create a little tiny loop on the yarn. Okay, now we're gonna go over this first bar and under the second one like this. It's really easy to use your finger to help guide it over the crochet hook. And once it's on the crochet hook, you're gonna take that yarn and pull it through the loop that you made. The easiest way to get it through that loop is to really scoop it, to so scoop it like that, you know? Like whoop, and then scoop it through the hole. That's the easiest way to get through that yarn. And that's gonna create something called a chain stitch, which will hold your yarn together. So now you can pull it off of your fingers. And this is something that we call a magic loop. Now, when you pull this tail end, it'll close the loop tighter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work our first round of stitches into the center of this magic loop, which is going to uh, then be pulled tight to close the hole really tight. Okay, so this pattern is made with pretty much only single crochets, which are really the easiest first stitch that you're gonna learn in crochet, um, which is why I say that this pattern is very beginner friendly. Now for making a single crochet, it's actually pretty simple. Let's go ahead and close this hole just a little bit more. All you wanna do is you wanna take your crochet hook and go into the center of the stitch. Now for us, our stitch, stitch, is the magic loop in the center here. So you're gonna take your crochet hook, go into the stitch, AKA the center of the loop, and then go ahead with the end and yarn over. So place it over your yarn like that and place and take your crochet hook and pull it under the stitch like so. Now you're gonna have two loops on your crochet hook. See, I got one, two. What you wanna do is now go over the stitch, yarn over with the end of yarn again, place it on the crochet hook, and then pull that through the two loops on the hook. Really try to scoop it to help you get through those two holes a lot easier. That's gonna be called a single crochet stitch. We're gonna be making this pattern with almost entirely single crochet stitches. For this first round, we wanna do six of these single crochets into this magic loop. That's gonna create the first uh, start of our whole piece. So we're, let's do another one. We just did one. You can see that we did one because you can see that V at the top there where this loop is coming out of. That signifies the end of a stitch. All right, so now let's go into the hole again for our second single crochet. We're gonna yarn over and pull it through the stitch, AKA the hole. And then we're gonna go over the stitch, yarn over again, and pull that second one through the two loops that are on the hook. That's gonna be two single crochets. See, one, two. All right, we want six of those total. Let's get a little bit more yarn. Go into the hole. Yarn over and pull that through, going over it, yarn over and pull through two, one, two. There's our third single crochet. Let's do our fourth. Yarn over and pull it under, going over, yarn over and pull through two. Number five. Over and pull through two. 
And then our last single crochet for our first round into the hole, yarn over, pull it through, over the hole, yarn over, and pull through two. That's gonna be the end of round one. Now I'm gonna pull this loop a little bit out like that, and that's because I'm going to add a stitch marker to this, and I don't want my piece to get undone. So I'm gonna take my crochet out, place it to the side for a second, and let's grab yarn in a completely different color. Um, hopefully something that can just be seen on your piece. So I'm gonna be using our red, this like red wool yarn that I just have available here. I'm just gonna cut a little sliver. You just need a little bit of extra yarn in some different color. We're gonna take this yarn and place it into the center of this hole, like that, just like that. Now we'll take our crochet hook, place it in the loop, and I'm going to tighten this loop around a little bit tighter like that. And we're just gonna hold that yarn in place. Now we can take this tail end and we're gonna pull it tight and it's gonna close this hole up and keep this red yarn in the center as our stitch marker. That'll keep track of where the ends of the rounds are. Just gonna pull it nice and tight. I'll tighten up that hole. Okay, and that's gonna be the end of round one. Now we're gonna take this little tail end here and we're just gonna fold it under like that and just ignore it, basically. We're just gonna completely ignore it. The same as this other tail end. We're just gonna ignore all of them. Now, if you want, if you're worried about the hole opening up, you can crochet around this tail end, the green tail end, just a little bit, just for like one stitch in the next round, and that'll keep it tightened uh, tight. But honestly, it probably is gonna be fine. So you can probably just leave it, leave it loose. Okay, so that's the end of round one. Now, round two, we're going to be doing a, uh, crochet stitches into all of the, the stitches that you made in your first round. Now normally, and you're gonna see this when we get to round three and four, we're gonna be working under both of the loops from the last uh, stitches. This pattern is worked in the round, meaning that we're gonna keep working in a spiral so you never have to turn around in your piece. You're just gonna keep going around over and over and over, which is why we need our stitch marker to know where the end of the rounds are. So like I said, normally we're going to be working under two loops like that with all of our single crochet stitches. So remember how we worked our single crochet stitches in the center of the magic loop? Act like these two loops are a stitch. Um, like that, and because that is the truth. These are a stitch. You're gonna be working into each one of these stitches. However, for our round two, we're going to be working into the back loops only, meaning the furthest loop away from us. This loop closest to you right here is the front loop and this one furthest from us is the back loop. The reason we're gonna be working into these back loops is it's gonna create a really clean border at the very top of the stem, which is just gonna be really nice. You don't have to work only in the back loop. You can work into both loops if you want instead. It's actually probably a little easier that way. However, this will add a little added detail that I think will be really nice for your stitch. Before we do that back loop only, we do wanna do a slip stitch into this first stitch that you made. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take your crochet hook and we're gonna go under both loops of that very first single crochet that you made. If you're having a hard time finding where that first single crochet was, check out where this loop is coming out of and count those Vs backwards. You should count backwards uh, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So this one right here is gonna be our first stitch in our pattern or in our round two. So we're going to work under both loops and do a slip stitch under that. This is just gonna get us set up. It's gonna go with a crochet hook under both of those loops. You wanna kind of point downwards under the loops like that, and you only wanna get under both of those ones. Now, once you're under those loops, we're gonna take the yarn uh, attached to the ball, yarn over, and pull it through the, the stitch like that. Again, use a scoop to make sure you're through that stitch. And then we're making a slip stitch, not a single crochet. So for a slip stitch, we're gonna take this yarn and pull it through the loop on the hook. It's kind of like half of a single crochet, just like that. And that's just gonna connect our circle together. Okay, so now we can really start round two. To start round two, we're gonna start by making a chain. We're gonna yarn over and pull that loop through the loop on the hook, like that. That's gonna create a chain which gives us a little bit of height. Now what we're gonna do is work a single crochet, which is what you did in round one, but only working into the back loops of all the stitches around, including the first stitch that you worked that slip stitch into. So that's gonna be right there. See how, just look for those Vs 
all the way around and look for only the top loop right here of all those Vs. So this would be both loops and this is just a top loop. So we're gonna take your crochet hook, get it prepared and go into that first back loop only right here. Uh, I like to use my nail to help me get my crochet hook under that first back loop. And now we're going to do a single crochet into that back loop. So we're gonna yarn over, pull a loop through the back loop, yarn over again, and pull through the two loops on the hook, one and two. That's gonna be our first single crochet in round two. We wanna do six single crochets in round two, one for each back loop around. So count, make sure to count this. So that's one. This is gonna be two into the next stitch right here. Back loop only. Yarn over, pull it through that back loop. Yarn over again and pull through two, one and two. Okay. There's our second stitch. Here's our third, next back loop right here. Use your nail to help guide into that back loop. Yarn over pull through, yarn over, pull through, one, two, for our third single crochet. Here's our fourth, back loop only, yarn over and pull it through, yarn over and pull through two, one, two. It's our fourth, we have two more, one, two. Let's go into the next back loop right here, yarn over and pull it through, then going over it, yarn over, pull through two, one, and two. There's our fifth. One more single crochet into this back loop right here. Pull through, over it, yarn over, and pull through two, one, and two. That's gonna be our last single crochet. And the, re the way you can tell it's the last single crochet if you were not counting is that little stitch marker is right in the way, so we can't keep going. We need, to, we need to keep track of where that stitch marker is. Okay, so that's gonna be round two. Now, if you finished round two, congratulations. I believe that is probably the most difficult round in this whole pattern. So if you did that, good job. You did probably the hardest part, except for the leaf. The leaf is a little bit more difficult, but that's optional, so I don't count it. <laughs> All right, so now we are on round three. And actually for the next uh, four rounds plus, like however many rounds you wanna make, we're gonna be adding height to this vine by working single crochets into all the stitches all the way around. Um, so that's gonna be rounds, at least rounds three, four, five, and six. So at least four rounds, we're gonna be doing the exact same thing. Uh, now, what, like I said, you can make this longer. So here's like a really long vine that I made and I did a lot more than six rounds of single crochets. But let me show you how that even, how to even do this. So the first thing we wanna do is take our stitch marker and fold it up like that, and we're just gonna ignore it completely. Next, we wanna find our first single crochet that we made, and the easiest way is count backwards, count back from six, find the double loops like that, and count back one, two, three, that one's gonna be three, sorry, there we go four, five, and six. So this one right there will be our first single crochet that we want to work into. Now the confusing part here is you can see that's the first one, but there's like two stitches between that that look like maybe a stitch that you should be working into, but they're not. So don't work into that. That's our slip stitch and that's our first chain stitch, um, which give us our height. So just ignore those completely and work into that first stitch that you have with the needle poking out of it. We're gonna be working into both loops, meaning that we're gonna work under one and two, not just the back loop, under both of them at the exact same time. So you should have two little, like kind of loops over the crochet hook like that. We're gonna be working single crochets into all of these chains, or all of these stitches. So we're gonna yarn over, once you're into that stitch, pull it through the stitch, yarn over again, and pull through two loops, one, two, like that. There's our first single crochet. We wanna just keep single crocheting into each stitch around. So once you have that one done, you pull it up a little bit, you can see that's where, this is where that stitch is coming out of, that hole right here. So we wanna start our next single crochet into this next hole right here. 
So once you get into the next one, we yarn over again, pull it through that stitch, yarn over again, and pull through two, one, and two. There's our second single crochet, one, two. We're just gonna keep, honestly, you don't even really need to keep count now. All you need to do is make sure that you're not going into the same stitch. You just need to go into the next one right here. Yarn over, single crochet. And we'll just be doing this for quite a while. There's two. Here's the next one. Single crochet. And we're just gonna keep going around until we find our red yarn that we started uh, use, that we're using as our stitch marker. There's gonna be six in each round. There's the next one. I think we have one more for our round three. Here's our last one right here. Oops. Make sure you're under both loops. And there is round three done. Okay, so that's the end of round three. Now the next few rounds, rounds four, five, and six at least, uh, you just want to keep single crocheting all the way around. And before we get started, the first thing I want to do uh, in the next stitch, the first thing I want to do is I want to pull this so that that tail end just goes away kind of because it's just kind of annoying me. This tail end here, we can also cut pretty close. I like that close is fine. And it's the same kind of thing. We just need to ignore both of those. You can, we can try to stuff it into our piece a little bit. Um, you can maybe use the back of a needle for that. We'll just kind of stuff that yarn into the center like so. There we go. Now those ends are ignored. Okay, so we finished round three and now uh, it gets significantly easier as we go. We want to pull our stitch marker up like that. And now we're into round four. We're just working into each stitch all the way around. If you look at the top here, make sure you're under each of these Vs. Here, here's our stitch marker. There is our first stitch right here. We just wanna do that all the way around. Just keep single crocheting into each stitch around. It's very, it's not too crazy. Just under both loops and continuously single crocheting around. Again, let me know if you have any questions about this part in the comments or in the Discord channel. If I can't help, if I don't see it first, uh, someone else will be around to help, I'm sure. But we're just working a single crochet stitch into each one of these loops. Okay. This stitch. And here's the last one for round, I think we're on round four, like that. Okay, so you see how it's getting, giving us some height now? You can see how it's like a little stem growing. Pretty cute, pretty cute. All right, so now we're going to yarn over. We're on to round five. Again, we wanna just keep doing the same thing around. So we're just gonna go into the next stitch right here and do single crochets all the way around for that for this next round. Once you start getting into the groove of things for doing single crochets into each stitch, it makes it a lot easier. You just gotta get into the groove. Put on some music, chill out, and just do a few rounds of single crochets. Now we can just keep going around over and over until we have like a super duper long stem if you wanna make a ridiculously long stem. You can make it really a short long, uh, a short stem if you just stopped now and moved on to the next part. But we're gonna make it the average sized um, pumpkin stem by just doing our last round. We're on round six. You can see I pulled my stitch marker up there to keep track of our ends. And for this last round, we're just doing single crochets into each stitch round go two more gonna be one and then here's our last one right here will be two okay 
that's gonna be the end of round six, which will be the end of, for me, uh, how long I wanna make my stem, which is gonna be about that long. Okay, the next part we wanna do is make the vine. And we actually don't need to stop at all. We could just keep going as we were. So to make the vine, the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to go into the next stitch right here and do a slip stitch, which is what we did at the very top of our piece. So we wanna go into that stitch right here, yarn over, pull it through that loop, and then pull that same loop through the loop on the hook for a slip stitch. Okay, that's gonna get us started. All right, now you want to chain at least 15 chains. You can chain more if you want. This is the part where you can customize your vine to be longer or shorter. Um, I like it at least 15 chains, which is probably gonna be about like that long, um, but you can make it longer or shorter. Okay, so, and you also don't need to make these chains at all. You can continue straight to the pumpkin part if you'd like. But we're gonna be doing our vine. We're gonna chain 15. We're gonna yarn over and pull it through the loop on the hook for a chain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Try not to make your chains too tight. That I think is as tight as possible, or as I want to make it. Any tighter than that is gonna be hard to work with. Same thing as looseness. You don't wanna make these too loose, so try not to make them too loose as well. Okay, so now once you make those 15 chains, we want to work into the, uh, uh, the back loop of all the chains down the stem. So if you look at these chains, just like how a single crochet has different parts that you can work into, these chains also have different parts you can work into. Let's take our needle and I'll show you. So the top right here, that's gonna be the top loop of a chain, right, like that. The bottom part is gonna be right here. That's gonna be the bottom loop of the chain. But if you turn it on the back like this, see these little spines? Those are gonna be the back loops of the chains. For the stem, I really like working into these back loops and working slip stitches all the way down to the base. You don't have to, you can work only in the top loop or the bottom loop or however you wanna do it. But I find that working into this back loop makes a very curly chain, which I, or curly vine, which I really like. The important thing is you wanna work into the second, start in the second chain from the hook. So if this one right here is gonna be the first chain. The second chain is gonna be right here and the back loop of that second chain is gonna be right there. Like that. So what we wanna do is get our crochet hook in there, take that needle out, and we're gonna start into that second chain from the hook, so we skip that first one right here's our second one. Crochet hook very close, and use your nail to help pry your crochet hook into that back loop. Once you're into that back loop, we want to do a slip stitch. Yarn over, pull it through that loop, and then through the loop on the hook, like that. We want to do that all the way down to the base. Because we skipped our first chain, that's going to be at least 14 slip stitches down to the base, um, but more if you decided to do uh, more chains and make your uh, vine even longer. So there's our first one. We'll keep going down. Here's our second one. Here's our third one, really close, like that. Here's our fourth. You see how it's making it, see how it's kind of starting to twist itself anyhow? That's exactly what we want. But when we get done with this vine, you'll see I like to twist it and make it even more curly. There should be 14 here, but if you end up having a little bit more or less than 14, this vine is really forgiving, so it's really not the end of the world. But we're just gonna keep chaining our way down the vine. Just a few more. Okay, one here. Okay, now this is our last one. 
You can see that there's our last chain. The back loop is kind of in an awkward position, but it's right there, like that. And then to finish it up, we're gonna slip stitch into the front loop only of the same piece that we slip stitch into originally. What does that mean? Okay, so if you look at the top here, this stitch right here next to where this chain is coming out is the same, that's where we started this whole piece. So what we wanna do is, remember how in the beginning of this vine, we worked only in the back loop, meaning the one furthest away from us right here? It's kinda of hard to get into right now, but that was the back loop only. This time we wanna work only in the front loop, which is right here. So we wanna go into that front loop and do a slip stitch. So where that chain's coming out, right here, get your crochet hook into that front loop only, yarn over, pull it through that front loop and through the loop on the hook to finish up our vine. You can see how it's kind of, we're gonna give it a curly cue piece in a second. But after you do that, we can actually cut the yarn and just pull it all the way through like that. We're gonna work around this tail end so that it's we don't have to worry about it later. But uh, that is gonna be how to make the stem and the vine. So now we just need to start making the pumpkin part. Okay, let's get our orange yarn. Okay, so next up we want to be uh, working on the body of our pumpkin. So we're gonna start with our, grab our orange yarn and we're actually gonna start by making a slip knot, which is a new technique. Uh, it might be a new technique to you. For a slip knot, we're gonna take this tail end and fold it over our piece like that to create a loop. And then we're going to take that loop and fold it over itself like that. It kind of makes a little pretzel look. Go into the hole, grab this end, attach the ball, and grab this tail end with your thumb and just pull it like that. That's gonna create a something called a slip knot. Uh, this, when you place your crochet hook on it and you pull this tail end, nothing is gonna happen. But when you pull the end attached to the ball of yarn, it's gonna pull the slip knot nice and tight. So we wanna make one of those. That's how to start. I'm gonna pull it off of my crochet hook. We want one of these. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take your crochet hook and go right into that same front loop only that you slip stitched into at the end for that vine. So we're gonna go right into that front loop only. You kind of see how it's like pulled out already. It's right there. We're gonna yarn over with our loop and pull it through that front loop only like that. And then we're going to yarn over with the end attached to the ball and pull it through to make a chain, just like that. Okay, so that's how we're gonna get started for uh, round seven of our pumpkin body, but the first uh, round of our pumpkin body. Now, before we get going for this round, we're gonna take the tail end of this green one and this tail end of this orange one we're just gonna hold it right over it like that. And we're gonna work around these two tail ends as we go to lock them into place. For this first round of our pumpkin body, AKA round seven in the written instructions, we're gonna do an increase into each stitch around. An increase means that we're going to work two single crochets into the exact same spot. We're gonna start in the same spot where we did that, that chain. So if you actually follow that down into the V, take your crochet hook, go straight into that same spot where that's coming out of, like that. Go under these two tail ends, make sure they're over the yarn, or over the hook. Yarn over with the tail end attached, or to the end attached to the ball, onto the hook, and pull it under the loop. So you can't really see where it's being pulled under, but if you just scoop it, it shouldn't be a problem. Then we're gonna go over everything, yarn over again, and pull it through the two loops on the hook, for your first single crochet of your first increase in round seven. Now we wanna do another single crochet into that same spot. So see where that hole is? You can see my finger just poking through. Go into that same place, yarn over with the end of the ball, or end attached to the ball, pull it under that stitch, yarn over again, going over, and pull through two, one, and two. That is going to be our first increase in round seven, and an increase again is two single crochets. You see those Vs at the top, one, two, into the same stitch. We wanna do an increase into each front loop only all the way around, which means it's gonna be 
um, six increases total, and each increases two single crochets, which means we're going to have 12 single crochets by the end of this round. Before we get going there, we can go ahead and cut this yarn. We don't need it. We can just pull it, push it to the side and place it in like that. Next, we're going to work into the next front loop, which is going to be right here. Face up from the bottom and poke it straight up, and it'll help you get only into that front loop. And we're going to do a single crochet, or an increase into that, which means two single crochets. Yarn over, pull it under that front loop, yarn over again, and pull through two, one, and two. There's our first. Now go into the same stitch. You can see how it's kind of opened up there. Same stitch. Yarn over, pull it through, yarn over again, pull through two, one, two. It's going to be our second increase done and our fourth stitch for round seven. Okay, let's go to the next stitch. It's going to be right here, poking straight up from the bottom. Make sure you're only into that front loop and do another increase. Pull it through, yarn over, pull through two, one, and two. There's our first. Let's do another one with the same stitch. Pull through, over, pull through two. That's going to be our third increase. One, two, three increases. One, two, three, four, five, six stitches. Okay, three more increases to go. Next front loop right here. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. There's our first single crochet of that next increase. Same front loop. There we go. There's our fourth. We got two more. Here's our next. Front loop only, single crochet, and another single crochet into the same loop. Okay, last one is gonna be right here. You can tell it's the last one because this stitch marker is poking out, which is great. But if you don't have that stitch marker and you need to tell it's the last stitch, just count your stitches backwards. There should be 12 stitches in this round. There's our first single crochet, aka our 11th stitch. One more into the same stitch. Boom, there we go. Okay, so now we wanna count backwards Starting from where this loop is coming out, uh, if you want to count your stitches, there should be 12 total. So we're going to go, this will be our first one. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. So this one right here is going to be our 12th stitch. Don't get it confused with this little bit here. That's just going to be the chain to get it started. So we're going to start in that one for our next round. Okay, so let's get our crochet hook prepped like that. Take our, our stitch counter and just fold it over our piece like that. And we'll continue on to round eight. For round eight, we're going to skip this vine completely. We're just going to com like ignore it totally, fold it up, and we're gonna make sure that we're around the outside. Make sure it's not in like this or else it'll be stuck in your piece. You want it out like that. We're gonna go into our first stitch, which is signified with that needle right here. And this is gonna be round one, I mean round eight. For round eight, we're gonna do a single crochet into our first stitch, which is gonna be this one that we currently have our crochet hook into, yarn over, pull it through, and then yarn over and pull through two like that. There's our first one. Into our next stitch right here, we want to do an increase. We're gonna yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through two. And an increase means two single crochets in the same stitch. So there's our first one. Our second one's gonna go right into that same stitch. Pull through, over and pull through two. Okay, so there's gonna be the beginning. One single crochet in the first one, and then an increase into the next stitch. Then we wanna repeat that process six times total. So that's our first repeat, one single crochet, one increase. We're gonna do that six times in a row. Let's do our second repeat. That means our next stitch is gonna be right here, and it's gonna be a single crochet. And then after that first single crochet, we're gonna go into the next stitch right here and do an increase, or two in the same stitch. One. 
and two. One single crochet, one increase. All right, we're gonna repeat that all the way around. There's our second repeat. Let's do our third repeat. Single crochet into the next stitch. Increase into the stitch after. One and two. Okay, next stitch, right here. And then next stitch after that, right here, is gonna be an increase. One and let's get a little bit more yarn, two. Okay, we're almost done. We only have two more repeats. I know that because I can see that this is gonna be the end of the round, right where the vine is and right where that stitch counter is right there. So two more repeats. Here's our next repeat, single crochet one in the first, and then increase into the next, one and two. Okay, last repeat, one single crochet into the first, increase into the next after right here, one and two. Okay, see how our piece is coming together. And don't worry, I know this fine is not looking the way you probably want it to, but we're gonna fix that up in a little bit once we have a little bit more, so it just doesn't get in our way. We're gonna pull our stitch marker up and continue on to round nine. For round nine, you're gonna to start to see the pattern of making your piece larger or smaller or however large you want it to be for your pumpkin. And that's gonna be, we're going to do the same kind of repeat, but instead of doing one single crochet and then one increase like we did in round eight, we're going to do two single crochets, one, two, and then our increase repeated six times all the way around the base. At the end of round eight, you should have 18 stitches around. So if you wanna count all your Vs around, you should have 18 right now. At the end of round nine, because we're doing six more increases, it's gonna be going from 18 to 24 stitches. So you should have 24 stitches by the end of round nine. Okay, so let's start round nine. We're gonna start by going into the next stitch right here, right after the stitch count, stitch marker right here. And we're gonna do a single crochet into the first and then another single crochet into the second. So one, two single crochets and then an increase or two single crochets in the same stitch. So here's our first increase in round nine. Okay, so single crochet, single crochet, increase. We wanna repeat that all the way around. That's our first repeat. Let's do a second repeat, two single crochets, one, two, and then an increase after that. One and two. Okay, there's our second repeat. Keep counting, one, two, and then three and four. If you wanna count your stitches, uh, by the way, we are currently at 12 stitches around, and we wanna to get to 24. So let's keep going. Uh, this is gonna be our fourth repeat. Stitch number 13 is a single crochet, and then 14 is just a regular single crochet, and then 15 and 16 are gonna be in the same stitch for an increase. So there's 15 and 16. Keep going, here's our fifth repeat. One single crochet, two single crochets, and then an increase, three, and four. Okay, last one, two single crochets, last repeat I mean. There's one and two, and then our very last increase right here, it's gonna be stitch number 23 and stitch number 24 for our last increase in the same stitch. Okay, so you see all your pumpkins coming together now? Okay, let's pull our stitch marker up. And we're going to continue, the, now you're really going to see the pattern because we're going to continue making this pumpkin as large as we want. We can keep going bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, in our next round here, we're going to do three single crochets, then an increase repeated six times around. So you can see how we went up from uh, round nine was two single crochets and increase. Now we're on to round 10. We want one, two, three single crochets and then increase repeated all the way around. And you can imagine... Uh, where it's going to go from there. Round 11, we'll do four and then an increase. Round five, we'll do five, or round 12, we'll do five single crochets and then an increase, getting bigger and bigger. Now, personally, I like to get up to 42 stitches around as the 
as the circumference before we start making the length of our pumpkin. However, uh, you can make it smaller or bigger. So at this point, if you want to make just a tiny pumpkin, you could just start doing single crochets into each stitch, which is what we're going to do after we increase it to the size that we want. And that's gonna start giving you the length of your pumpkin that you're going to want. But for me, I wanna make it bigger and bigger. So let's continue on to round 10. For round 10, we're doing three single crochets and then an increase, repeated six times around. So let's do one, two, three, and then an increase after that right here, four and five in the same stitch. Okay, so it's three, one, two, three single crochets, and then an increase after that. Here's a little quick tip also. If you want to tell the difference between a single crochet and an increase, just a quick aside, if you look at your stitches right here, this is a single crochet. See how there's a V going into one spot? This stitch right after it is an increase. You can see there's kind of two Vs going into one spot. That's a great way to help you see your increases in your past rounds. And at a later point, if you get bit, uh, the better you get at crochet, the easier those are to see. And eventually you'll get to the point where you won't even need a stitch marker. You can just count your stitches uh, as you're going. That's what I like to do. All right, so we're continuing round 10. We did our first repeat, three single crochets and then an increase. Let's do our second repeat. You want six repeats total. So for a second, that's one, two, three single crochets, and then our increase right here, four and five in the same stitch. A little bit more yarn. Let's do our third repeat. One, two, three single crochets, and then our increase. Four and five in the same stitch. And this is gonna bring you up, I'm just gonna keep going around. This is gonna bring you up from 24 stitches, which is what we had at the end of round nine, up to 30 stitches, which is what we will have at the end of round 10 after two more repeats. So we have two more repeats here. Again, the repeat is one, two, three, and then our increase after that, four and five. Okay, continue on, last repeat. One, two, three, and then our final re our final increase into this last stitch right here. One and two, and there we go. It's gonna be the end of round 10. You can see how our piece is getting bigger and bigger now. Pull our stitch marker up, and we can continue on to round 11. Again, if you want to start now making the length of your pumpkin, uh, if you're following along in the written instructions, skip to rounds 13 to 24. Um, that's gonna be the rounds where we're doing just single crochets. But we have gotta get there naturally for this video. So we're gonna go up to round 11 now. For round 11, we're doing four single crochets and then an increase repeated six times around. So we're adding one additional single crochet to the repeats. So four single crochets, one, two, three, four. Four single crochets, four different stitches, and then two into the next stitch for our increase. It's gonna be five and six stitches total for that repeat. So that's one, two, three, four, and then five, six, our increase. Let's repeat that six times around. And this is gonna bring you up from 30 stitches, which is what we had in round 10 up to 36 stitches, which is what we'll have at the end of round 11. Okay, there we go. Continuing our repeats, this is gonna be my third repeat, I believe. It's one, two, three, four single crochets, and then an increase, five, and six into the same stitch. Okay, keep going. One, two, three, 
four single crochets and then our increase right here. One and two. Okay, two more repeats to get to the end of this round. One, two, three, four, and then our increase, five and six. Let's get a little bit more yarn. Last bit, one, two, three, four, and then our last one right here, five and six to get us up to 36 stitches around. That'll be the end of round 11. We're getting pretty good now. Honestly, I think this is probably also a great size for your pumpkin if you wanna make it this size. But we're gonna do one more round of increasing. And then after that, I'll explain how to make it bigger if you'd like to make it bigger. Um, but we'll continue on to the length after, this, uh, after round 12 here. So for round 12, we pulled our stitch marker up. We want to do another round of increasing uh, for round 11, we did four, then an increase. For this round, round 12, we're going to do five single crochets and then an increase repeated six times around. So that's five single crochets. One, two, three, four, five. And then into this next one right here, we want to do our increase. That's six and seven into the same stitch. Okay, five single crochets, one increase, repeated six times around. Let's do our second repeat. This is gonna bring you up, by the way, one, two, three, four, five. This is gonna bring you up from 36 stitches to 42 stitches around. So there's our fifth single crochet and then increase right here. One and two. And 42 stitches around is going to be the max that I, uh, well, it's not the max that I like to do for pumpkins, but it is the average. That's what I usually like to do for these pumpkins to get them to the size that I really like. Okay, one more increase right here. Boom, and boom. There we go. Okay, and then two, uh, we got three more repeats to get to the end. One, two, three, four, five, and then our increase, six, and seven. Okay, let's do it again. Two more, one, two, three, let's get a little bit more yarn, four, five, and then our last increase, or, or increase after that, six and seven into the same stitch. Last repeat, one, two, three, four, five, and then our final increase, six and seven. Okay, let's pull our stitch marker up. All right, so that's gonna be the end of round 12. And as you can see, this is gonna be how to make it bigger or how to make it the size that I personally like for our regular crocheted pumpkins. It's about it's this size. Now, if you wanna make it bigger, you totally can. And it's actually pretty easy. If you haven't uh, caught on to the rounds yet, um, if you wanna make it bigger, we'll do more rounds of increasing. So for our next round, for example, if you did wanna make it bigger, you do uh, six single crochets, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then an increase, and then repeat that six times around. And then in the round after that, you do seven single crochets, then increase, bigger and bigger and bigger, and you get it bigger and bigger until you have the pumpkin that's gigantinormous. However, I really like these little pumpkins. I think they're very cute this size, and uh, we don't need to make it bigger than that. So I'm gonna continue on now to our uh, next round of uh, our pumpkin. So now is when we're going to add a length to our pumpkin, or the height rather. So you can see here, these both are made with the same stitches around, like this could be this pumpkin or this pumpkin. However, this pumpkin I'm doing long, making it long, and this pumpkin I made it nice and short. 
So what we're going to do now is we're on to round 13 in the pattern. For round 13 till wh however long you want to make it, you're just going to do a single crochet into each stitch all the way around. Just one single crochet for each stitch. And you're just going to keep doing that for every round to get bigger. For what? Uh, for how big I make it, um, for this normal size pumpkin, I did 12 rounds of single crochet, which is what I'm going to do right now. So that's going to be rounds 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. So all the way to rounds 24, that's 12 rounds total, we're going to do just single crochets. If you want to make it longer, like this one right here, you want to do more single crochets, more rounds. So for this one, I did 15 rounds of single crochets. This round I did, tw or this pumpkin I did 12. 15, 12. So you see how the difference is. You can make it even longer. You can make a giant long pumpkin if you want to by just continuously doing rounds of single crochets. Okay, so let's start round, I'm on round 13. We're just gonna do a single crochet for each stitch around. Really easy, there's no increasing here. This is my favorite part to just kind of chill, uh, maybe listen to a podcast, watch a TV show, whatever I wanna do, because I don't really need to pay too much attention. I just need to make sure that every single stitch just gets one single crochet. I don't accidentally put an increase by doing two into one stitch. I don't accidentally skip any stitches. You just need to make sure that you get one stitch, one single crochet per stitch. Now, as I'm going here, uh, before I'm going to end up cutting and coming back to when these rounds are done. But before I do that, uh, I'd like to talk really quick about a Club Crochet membership, uh, which is a great way to help support this channel if you want to help support us uh, financially. Uh, memberships get you a lot of different stuff. First off, you get to support the channel. Oh my God, that's so nice of you. But you actually get a lot of perks as well. The first thing is with a membership, you get access to the full library of tutorials. I have over, I think we're almost at 300 patterns uh, total right now. And I add new ones every single month. Last month I added three new patterns, um, but every month I add at least one pattern to the library. Every single pattern, just like this one, has the full written instructions, a downloadable PDF that's interactive with check marks to keep track of your progress, and a full length video tutorial, just like this pattern where I go through every single stitch of every pattern on the, on the website. That is a lot of videos, a lot of patterns, uh, and you can get access to all of them with just a Club Crochet membership. You can also get, uh, I come out with new patterns every month. The, we're working on a build your own pattern tutorial and you can get your, um, you can even get monthly kits mailed to your door each month with whatever materials you need to make whatever new patterns we're adding to the library that month. This month's kit was actually for a crocheted pumpkin. So everybody who was a club crochet member got all the materials that they needed to make a crocheted pumpkin, including some safety eyes and some black yarn to make a little, uh, a very simple amigurumi face to, your, to add to your pumpkin if you wanted to add one. Next month, we're making uh, burbs, which are my secret agents disguised as different kinds of birds. So we're going to be making um, some uh, macaws and some hummingbirds. I'm really excited about it. Uh, memberships start at only $5 a month, so it's a great way to relatively affordably afford, uh, uh, support the channel and get a lot of access to a lot of different tutorials uh, as well. So please consider becoming a Club Crochet member if you haven't already. It's a great way to support this channel and just, it'd be really cool. Okay, so that's my little spiel. I'll probably talk about it again near the end of this video, uh, but thank you so much for sticking around for that spiel if you uh, did. To say a very special thank you to anybody who's still watching this part because I have a feeling that there's a lot of people that just skipped ahead. So if you're one of the few people that did not skip ahead, super secret giveaway. This is a super secret giveaway only for people that have been watching this part of this video. All you need to do is you need to comment down below in the description or in the comments of this video and comment with a very specific emoji. And I'm going to select who comments with that emoji randomly after like a week or so. And I'm going to give that person a crochet kit for one of these pumpkins, or at least a gift card to the club crochet store so they can make uh, they can get a kit for whatever they want. Uh, let's see, what emoji should we 
post on that would be weird that you know like we wouldn't just randomly get we could do how about how about a lollipop <laughs> that's that's weird that's a weird one that is like totally out of nowhere if you comment in the just in the comments of this video with an emoji of a lollipop i will uh choose someone at random to get a crochet kit after a week so comment with a lollipop down below uh and i will reply to your comment and and i'll do a little community post to let uh the person know whoever won uh and then after that we'll exchange emails and i'll send them a gift card and they can get whatever kit they want so comment a lollipop down below for the super secret giveaway okay Whew. that's a lot that's a lot now i'm just gonna go ahead and chill out and continue crocheting our rounds of single crochets. I've done three rounds while we've been talking here, but we need 12 rounds total. So I'll go ahead, I'll be back in just a second, crocheting our 12 rounds of single crochets. Okay, so I am just at the end of round 24 and our 12 rounds of just single crochets. Now here's a quick, I got a couple of quick tips. First one is how to uh, make sure that you did 12 rounds of just single crochets. If you follow this last stitch all the way down, you can count your, you can count your rounds. And if you follow them all the way down, you'll find an increase eventually. So if we count down from where this V is, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And then the one right here is an increase, which you can tell because there's two Vs going into one spot. So that's one way you can count your stitches or count your rounds and stuff. Uh, pretty useful. Now, before we continue on, the other thing I want to talk about is uh, getting rid of our stitch marker. So we need our stitch marker now is just so tiny and we still need to use some of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull out the stitch marker from the top. I like using a needle for this and just pulling out from a couple rounds, just the red yarn, just really easily just pulling it through to get it out from those rounds. And then we can just pull it down a few rounds, down to here, pull it out, and let's find the very end. Let's see if we can't just pull it through like that. There we go, now our stitch marker is further down and we have uh, more stitch marker to use. The last thing uh, we want to do before we continue on to round 25 is we want to uh, make our vine more, you know, uh, corkscrewy. So what I like to do is I like to grab the end like this and just kind of twist it in on itself to kind of create a corkscrew shape. If you twist it enough, it should hold its position. I, always, I also like to like pinch it a little bit that will give you a corkscrew shape to your vine and it should hold like that um, as long as you don't pull it out or anything like that okay so that is uh how to make your vine a little more corkscrewy and now we can continue on to round 25. um for our next round let's pull our stitch marker up now, for our next few rounds, uh, we are going to start decreasing our piece down to uh, close the hole up. God, the yarn got all tangled for some reason. There we go. We want to start decreasing it down to get the yarn uh, to get uh, to start closing up the bottom of our hole. We're basically going to create a little ball, uh, and then we're going to create the shaping for all of the different segments of the pumpkin. So for these next rounds, uh, these these last, let's see, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, for our next six rounds, we're going to be decreasing it down in a similar fashion to how we increased it up, but instead of doing increases, we're going to do invisible decreases, which I'll show you how to do in just a second. Uh, if you made your pumpkin larger, if you continuously made the increases bigger, you're going to have to make uh, your decreases uh, similarly um, so that it decreases it down a little bit easier. But I think you'll get the idea pretty quick on how to do that. So for our last round of increases, round 12, we did five single crochets and then an increase. That's going to be all the way down here to get to our last shape. So now we're on round uh, 25 and we're going to do our first round of decreasing it down. For that first round, we're going to do just like in this last in the last round of increasing, we're going to do five single crochets. 
But then instead of doing an increase, we're going to do an invisible decrease, which I'll show you in a second. If you made your piece bigger and you did six single crochets, then increase down here to make it wider. Now you want to do six single crochets, then an invisible decrease. And we'll continually be doing rounds uh, with less single crochets in each round between decreasing. Okay, I know that was a lot of vocabulary, but <laughs> it'll make sense in a second. Let's just start with this first round, round 25. We're going to do five single crochets. One, two, three, four, and five. And then we're going to do an invisible decrease. For an invisible decrease, we're going to work only in the front loops of the next two stitches. So both of these stitches simultaneously, we're going to get our crochet hook under both of them, kind of like this. And then we're going to do a single crochet into them. And that'll create a really clean and uh, invisible decrease that you can't see at all in your piece. Uh, if you want to learn more about decreasing, I do have a video tutorial for that, which I can link to right here or in the description, or just go to my channel and look up decreasing. Okay, but let's do an invisible decrease. We're going to take your crochet hook. We're going to go up. I find it's easiest to get into both of these front loops by going up from the bottom like that. There's the first front loop. And then I flip it around to get in position for the second front loop, and then go up again. Now I'm under two front loops, and now we're going to do a single crochet. Yarn over, pull it under those two front loops, really scoop it. That'll help you get under those way easier. And then yarn over again and pull through two loops like that. And that's an invisible decrease. The best way to decrease very hidden. All right, so now uh, we're going to repeat that process all the way around six times total, six repeats total. That was our first repeat. Let's do our second repeat. Again, that's five single crochets. The single crochet after our invisible decrease, it, it looks kind of weird at the top, but you can kind of see it's this. It's not this stitch. It's actually this stitch right here. You kind of see how that, that stitch is getting pulled out. So just be wary about the next single crochet after your invisible decreasing. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. And then our next invisible decrease, front loop, front loop, like that. Do them each individually, and then yarn over and scoop it to get under them, and then yarn over again and pull through two. That's gonna be our second repeat. Let's do our third repeat. Five single crochets, one, two, three, four, five, and then our invisible decrease. Front loop, front loop, yarn over and single crochet. And at the end of this round, I'm on my fourth repeat now, but at the end of this round, you're going to be going down from 42 stitches down back down to 36 stitches so you should have 36 by the end of this round i did my five single crochets now we want our invisible decrease front loop front loop single crochet keep going five single crochets one whoops two three four five front loop front loop single crochet Last repeat, one, two, three, four, five, and then an invisible decrease. Front loop, front loop, single crochet. All right, we pull our stitch counter, our stitch marker up, and uh, that'll be the end of round 25. You can kind of see how it's starting to decrease it down. So for round 26, we're going to continue this process by doing, uh, but doing one less single crochet between invisible decreases continuously until we get it small enough to go, uh, to sew it closed. So we're now on round 26. This round, we're going to do four single crochets and then an invisible decrease repeated uh, six times total. So that's one, two, three, four, and then our invisible decrease front loop, front loop, single crochet. All right, and then we'll just repeat that all the way around. Four single crochets, one, two, three, four, front loop, front loop, single crochet. 
We want six repeats of this total, just like in our last round. And this is gonna bring you down, unless this is our next invisible decrease. This is gonna bring you down from 36 stitches down to 30 stitches around. So by the end of this round, you should only have 30 stitches around. One, two, three, four single crochets, and then an invisible decrease. And I believe that was our fourth repeat, so we have two more. One, two, three, four single crochets, invisible decrease. Each knee, san, shi, and then our invisible decrease. Front loop, front loop, single crochet. Okay, that's gonna be the end of round 26. We can pull our stitch marker up. And we're just gonna continue uh, decreasing it down. We have one more round of decreasing and then we can start to stuff it and add a face if we want to and stuff like that. Let's do uh, our next round, round 27. Three single crochets. We're doing it one single crochet less than the last round. So this time we're doing one, two, three single crochets and then our invisible decrease, our front loop, front loop, single crochet. And we'll repeat that six times total. So for our second repeat, one, two, three, and then our invisible decrease. This round should bring you down from 30 stitches, which is what we had at the end of round 26, uh, down to 24 stitches, which is what we'll have at the end of our round 27 here. Okay, here's our... I think our fourth repeat, one, two, three. And as we get smaller, it's harder to get your hand in there to hold it, but I'll show you a trick if you're having a really hard time with that um, when we get it a little bit smaller than this. I'll show you a nice trick to use for how to get in and out of your stitches a little bit easier when it's this small. All right, last repeat, one, two, three, and then our invisible decrease here. All right, and that's gonna be the end of round 27. I'm gonna pull it out just a little bit here because we wanna talk about a few things. Um, the first thing is uh, we will stuff it a bit here, but if you wanna add a face to your pumpkin, uh, now is your best shot for doing that. That is if you wanna add a uh, like safety eyes and a face. So here is on my white pumpkin. I actually do have a face on the white pumpkin on the outside of it. Um, the important thing to note when you're doing this face is when you're adding our segments, which I'll talk about this again when we get to that part. But when you're adding our segments, you wanna make sure you go around the face so that the face is all in one whole segment. Uh, for the face, I like using eight millimeter eyes um, or larger. And you want them, let's see, I put them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stitches apart from each other. And then I did just a very simple smile um, by just pulling yarn through one hand end and then using a little bit of yarn through the middle to tie it tight so that it made a little smile. Um, if you want to add a needle felted uh, face to make a little jack-o'-lantern face, if you want to add face, uh, that kind of way to make a face, uh, do it after you've already completed the pumpkin. You don't need to do that part right now. You do it after the pumpkin is done. Okay, uh, the other thing we want to talk about is stuffing it. Uh, so now we want to stuff it a little bit. We don't want to stuff it all the way right now. Uh, just a little bit because it's a little easier to add some stuffing now than it is later. Uh, make sure to add into your stuffing, especially right now, uh, your extra little threads that you cut loose. Uh, they make good stuffing and it helps to limit the amount of waste that you have. I think we can add just a little bit more stuffing than that right now. But again, you do not want to overdo it uh, just in general on stuffing on this pattern, but you definitely don't want to overdo it right now um, because it'll make your crocheting for the last few rounds a little bit more difficult than it, than it needs to be. Okay, so now we're on to, let's continue crocheting, we are on to round 28. And you might be able to guess round 28 now because we're going to continually decreasing it down. For our last round we did three single crochets and then an invisible decrease. For round 28, we're going to do just two single crochets and then an invisible decrease. So that's one, two, and then an invisible decrease. One and 
two in the front loops only, and then single crochet. We're going to repeat that six times total, going all the way around the piece, going, uh, which is going to bring us down from 24 stitches down to uh, 18 stitches, which is what we're going to have at the end of round 28 here. And as you can see, because this hole has gotten so much smaller, I'm actually just using one finger to hold it into the piece instead of like, I was using like my whole hand almost the round before this. But now I'm down to just one finger and eventually it'll get down, it'll get so tiny that we won't even be able to get to hold anything in it. So we'll have to hold it like this. I actually like to pinch it like that to kind of get into the stitches, but I'll show you that again um, uh, after, I think after the next round, maybe the next two rounds, when it gets so tiny that it's really difficult to work with. So one, two, invisible decrease. We're coming up to the end, by the way. Again, if you haven't yet, please consider liking this video down below, uh, subscribing to the channel, and hitting the little bell icon so you don't miss it when we come out with no more live streams. Okay, last stitches in round 28. We got one, two, and then an invisible decrease. Boom. There we go. We'll pull the stitch marker up and we can continue on to round 29, our uh, second to last round in our piece. So for round 29, we're gonna do uh, our basically our last round of decreasing the single crochets between repeats. Last round we did two single crochets and then an invisible decrease. This round we're gonna do just one single crochet. One single crochet and then an invisible decrease. Front loop, front loop, single crochet. And we're gonna repeat that process six times total. So there's our first repeat, let's do our second. Single crochet one, invisible decrease one. There's our second repeat. This is gonna bring you down from 18 stitches down to 12 stitches, which is what we're gonna have uh, at the end of round 29 here. Single crochet one, invisible decrease one, two, single crochet. Just a few more stitches here. One single crochet, one invisible decrease. And then last one, one single crochet and one invisible decrease like that. Okay, so that's the end of round 29. I'm gonna pull my stitch marker up for our last round and uh, we are going to stuff it just a bit more now. Um, this is not your last chance to stuff it, but this is the, uh, I would say in the, in the pattern, I say the first bit of stuffing is stuff it somewhat. Now we're stuffing it mostly, so you wanna mostly stuff it now, um, but you'll have an opportunity after our next round to stuff it just a little bit more. And you want it to be pretty squishy. Okay, so you do not wanna overstuff it because the more stuffing you put in it, the higher the chances that you're going to see the stuffing through your stitches uh, once we sew it, uh, once we add our segments to our pumpkin. Um, you want it stuffed just enough so that you can squish it in really easy, but it still retains its shape when you let it go. So see how this one kind of still left a little bit of a dent there? You want to kind of stuff it just a little tiny bit more than that. Just a little bit. If you got the crochet kit for this, uh, just use all the stuffing in the crochet kit. It should be the perfect amount. Okay, maybe just a little tiny bit more, and then we'll stuff the rest of this in at the end of uh, our next round. Okay, so now is our final round of crocheting for the pumpkin itself. We're gonna pull our stitch marker up. And this round's just going to be invisible decreases, six invisible decreases total, one for uh, every stitch around. So six invisible decreases in a row. So now we're at the point where it's really hard to get a grip on our piece. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold it in like this. I pinch it down, and that way we can see where the next front loop is, like that. One, and two, and then single crochet. That'll be our first invisible decrease. One, two, single crochet for our second invisible decrease, and then one, 
two. There's our third. Okay, just a couple more. One, two, single crochet, and then uh, two more. One, two, single crochet. Last one, one, two, and single crochet. Now we can cut the yarn. You don't need a very long end. We're just gonna use this for sewing it closed. And we're gonna use some more yarn for adding the uh, bits on the end. And we're just gonna pull it all the way through the piece like that to create a knot. Before we sew it closed, let's take our stitch marker out. We're gonna find the furthest stitch marker up there and just start peeling it away as we go because we don't need it anymore. Okay, all the way through. I'm just gonna go ahead and stuff our piece with this stitch marker to limit the amount of excess thread we have. And then we're just gonna finish stuffing this piece up now. I like using the back of my crochet hook because it's got a rubber backing. Uh, if you don't have a crochet hook like this, uh, you can probably fit your finger in there, but if you can't um, use a pencil with the rubber eraser end, uh, to help stuff it up a little bit more. I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this stuffing. I actually think this last bit might be enough. Let's see. I mean, yeah, it's got a pretty good bounce back. Let's just, I've got a little bit of stuffing right here anyhow. Let's just go ahead and finish up by stuffing that little bit. Okay. So that's it fully stuck. Well, you know what? I think I could do just a tiny bit more if I have any more. Oh, I might've used all of it. Here we go. I got just this little itty bit more that we'll use to stuff it in. Okay, so now we wanna sew it closed. We wanna take this end and thread it onto our needle. And we're just gonna sew this bottom part closed before we add our segments. To sew it closed, we're going to go through all the front loops into all these last stitches around and then pull it really tight and it'll close it really tightly. So we want to take your needle. We're going to go through the front loop only. So right here is our first front loop, right? If you want to count backwards, count from six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this one's going to be the first one. Front loop only like that. And then your next one right here, front loop only. Next one's right here. Couple more. And then one last one right here, front loop only. Once you're in all those front loops, you just wanna hold it right at the base here and just pull it really tight and it'll close that hole up. Then take this end, go right into the bottom and then come out, I, I usually like to like try to kind of hide it into some of my stitches on the bottom. I'm just kind of like getting my needle to go into the back, see how where that part's being pulled in. That's because I went into the back of those stitches. It's not really that necessary, but it does kind of help it stay sewn and closed a little easier. And then I'm gonna come out anywhere on the side, just like that, pull it nice and tight like so. And then we're gonna cut the yarn pretty close and then just squish it, and that will be our pumpkin sewn closed. Let's go ahead and give this vine a little bit more love. All right, so before we add, uh, before we do the last part where we're gonna add our leaf, we want to create the segments of our pumpkin. So what we wanna do is get some excess of our orange yarn. We don't need too crazy amount. Like, let's go with like that much. It's maybe like, I don't know, however long that is, like four, three or four feet maybe. And then we're gonna fold it in half and double it up like that. And then we're gonna cut the yarn right at the very end there. So it's perfectly in half. We're just gonna pull it up like so. Then you'll have a loop on the end here and a long end. Take this loop 
and thread it into our needle like that. Okay, this part's fun. I like this part. We're gonna start by coming out through somewhere on the side of our pumpkin, really anywhere on the side, like right, right here is probably fine. And then come out right from one of the six stitches on the bottom. So see these last six stitches here? We're gonna be using all those. So we're gonna go in through the side, come out somewhere on that bottom one, and let just a little bit left over, which is what we're gonna to use to knot together on the inside. Now we're gonna take this end and try to go straight up parallel all the way up to the base of the pumpkin. Now this one just happens to line up almost perfectly with where the vine is. So I'm gonna go right under where the vine is. And that just happens to be on this side. It, it doesn't always, it, sometimes you come up through the other side because I start on the other side, but it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna go in through where the bottom of the vine is, wherever the bases of this is, and come out through the opposite side like that. Pull it through. You can pull it somewhat tight now. The good thing is this other tail end we can use to kind of pull this end tighter so you don't need to go too crazy tight yet. Now we're gonna come down to the other side, make it go as parallel as possible down to the bottom. Try to keep it somewhat tight end in like that so it creates a little like segment. And then we're gonna go in through a stitch on the base and then out through some other side, like let's go right there. And make sure to keep it a little tight like that. Just keep it tight. Don't let it, don't let it loosen up on you. Just keep it a little tight like that. And we're gonna keep doing the same thing. We're gonna go up, keep it parallel-ish, as parallel as possible. And then we're gonna go through this next stitch over. Just try not to go into the same stitch on the base. So this stitch was right here. This next one's gonna go right here next to it and come out across from it right here. We're gonna make six of these segments total. Okay, hold it somewhat tightened in and we're gonna go all the way down like that. Keep it somewhat tight. Then we're gonna go through the next one on the bottom here. Let's go right here. Well, that actually looks like where that one's coming out. So let's go like right here. We're gonna come out through right there. Don't worry about the bottom becoming kind of messy. That's probably gonna happen anyhow, but it's the bottom of your piece, so it doesn't really matter. Like that. Again, make sure to try to keep the tautness so that it keeps these segments. And we're gonna go straight up in through another stitch and then out through our last one to create six segments. One, two, three, four, five. This will be our sixth one. Pull it through, pull it still somewhat tight. Keep it, keep it tight so that it keeps those segments. We're gonna go straight down in through the last, I mean, really it's like anywhere, like right here is fine. And then come up through where the tail end of these two tail ends are coming out. So like, oh. see how that's coming out of the same stitch? Just like that. Okay, now we wanna pull everything as tight as we want it to be. Do not over tighten this. The more you tighten it, the higher the chance that your stuffing's showing through. You just want it segmented like this so that every one of these segments are just a little bit pulled in. This one actually could be pulled in just a little bit more. So maybe pull it just a little tighter, a little tighter. That's probably good. Once you have it as tight as you want it, you want to take these two ends and double knot them together. Like this, pull tight, and then double knot it. Like that, cut it really close and then squish it a little bit and that knot should just get hidden on the inside. And now, there we go. Let's, let's twirl our vine one more time. But there we go, we have a pumpkin. Look at that, how easy, how cute. Oh my gosh, I love it. 
it is, I just, oh, I love this pattern so much. It's so easy. Okay, so the last thing we want to do, uh, I mean, technically, we are done with our pumpkin. We have a little tiny pumpkin. But now, let's take it the next step up. We're going to make our uh, leaf. For the leaf, this part is going to be um, a little bit more difficult. This is the part where I would say is like, almost not as beginner friendly because we're gonna be making a lot of weird stitches that you have never seen if you're a complete beginner. That being said, I am gonna take it nice and slow. Uh, if you can't make this fine right away, I totally understand. Maybe check out Crocheting 101 to learn all about all the different stitches, but I will take it one stitch at a time so that it's really easy to make. So, uh, and obviously we have our Discord channel and the comments down below to work with if you have any questions and need any extra help. Let's go ahead and grab our green yarn. All right, so we're going to use our green yarn here. And we're going to start by making a slip knot, which is what we did with that orange yarn at the top of our pumpkin. So we're going to fold a loop and fold that loop over itself. And pull that back end up like so. Get our crochet hook right in there. Okay. For our leaf, we're going to start by chaining 12 with this green yarn. So we're going to yarn over and chain 12. Try not to chain too tight or too loose. Make it right in the, make it right in the center. So 12 chains. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Okay. After you do those 12 chains, we're going to be working into the back loop only of all these chains, just like how we did with that vine. So again, just as a refresher, if you look at your piece, we've got the top loop right here, the bottom loop right here, and the back loop being this spine of little loops on the back, which is what we're going to work into. We're going to start by skipping two chains. So we're going to skip two. That's going to be one chain right there. Second one's right there. And we're going to start by doing a double crochet into that third chain from the hook. For a double crochet, we're going to yarn over, then go into the stitch. So we want to skip two, one, two, start in the third, which is going to be right here. Use your nail to help you pry it open like that. So we got a yarn over, we went into the stitch, we want to yarn over again, pull it through that chain, yarn over again, pull through two loops on the hook, one and two, and then yarn over again and pull through the last two loops on the hook, one and two. That's going to be our first stitch for our leaf, our first double crochet. Okay, next we're going to do a triple crochet into the next two stitches. So for a triple crochet, it's also called a treble crochet, we're going to yarn over two times. One, two. Then we're going to go into the next stitch. Again, that's not going to be the one that's way opened up right there, but the one after it right here, into the back loop only, like that. Yarn over, pull it through that chain. Yarn over, pull through two. One, two. Yarn over, pull through another two, one, two, and then yarn over and pull through these last two, one, two. That's gonna be a triple crochet and it makes it just give it a little bit more height. We're gonna do another triple crochet into the next chain. So we got two in a row. So there's first triple crochet, let's do another one. So we're going to yarn over twice, one, two. Then we're gonna go into the next stitch that's gonna be right here. Use your nail to help pry it open. And we're going to do another triple crochet. So we're yarning over, pull it through the chain, yarn over, pull through two, one, two, yarn over, pull through another two, one, two, and then yarn over and pull through this last two, one and two. And that's going to be your second triple crochet. And you can kind of see how the leaf is starting to form. This is the back of the leaf. Okay, so now after doing those two triple crochets, we want to do a mini pico. So to do that, we're going to yarn over and chain two. One and two. This could create a little point at the end of our leaf. Now we're gonna work into the back loop only of that second chain from the hook. So we turn it kind of a bit like that. 
find that second chain from the hook. So that's one, it's gonna be right here. Like that, get your crochet hook in there. And we're gonna do a slip stitch into that back loop. So we're gonna yarn over, pull through, and pull through the loop on the hook for a mini pico. And it's gonna create a little point. Okay. All right, so now after doing that mini pico, we're going to do another triple crochet into the next chain. Yarn over twice, one, two, into the next one right here, like so. And we're going to yarn over, pull through that chain, yarn over, pull through two, one, two, yarn over, pull through two, one, two, and then yarn over and pull through the last two, one and two. Okay, so there's another triple crochet after the mini pico. Now we're going to do a double crochet into the next chain. We, for that, we yarn over one time, and then go into the next chain right here, get your crochet hook into that, yarn over, pull it through the chain, yarn over and pull through just two, one, two, and then yarn over and pull through the last two, one and two for a double crochet. Next, we're going to do one more triple crochet into the next one. Yarn over twice, one and two, and go into the next back loop right here, like so. Yarn over and pull it through. And then for a triple crochet, we're yarning over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through two. See, so we're making it like up, down, and then up, and then down. And we're gonna make one more mini pico here and to get to the end of the leaf. So we're, now we're gonna make another mini pico after that uh, triple crochet. Chain two, one, two. Skip the first chain into the back loop of the second chain from the hook. Get your crochet hook in there and do a slip stitch. Yarn over, pull it through, and pull it through for a little point. Now we're going to do a triple crochet into the next chain another triple crochet, so yarn over twice, into the next chain right here, like so, yarn over and pull it through, yarn over, pull through two, one, two, yarn over, pull through two, one, two, then yarn over, pull through two, one, and two. Now we're going to do a double crochet into the next one, yarn over, into the next chain right here, yarn over and pull it through, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through two. A half double crochet into the chain after, yarn over, go into the next chain right here, go into that chain, yarn over and pull it through. Now for a half double crochet, it's kind of like one less than a double crochet. We're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook, one, two, and three. Next, we're gonna do one single crochet into this last chain right here into this back loop. Just one single crochet there, and then another mini pico. So we're going to chain two, one, two, skip the first chain into the second chain from the hook right here. We're going to do a slip stitch. One, boom. Okay, so that's the first half of the, uh, of the leaf done. Now we're going to turn our piece 180 degrees like that, and we're going to work into the um, bottom loops of all these chains. So that's going to be right here into all these bottom loops. And this is going to create a little seam on the outside of the leaf. So we're going to start with this first one, which is going to be right here, right after that knot. And as we go down, we're going to be working around our tail end all the way down, just trying to work around it as we do all of our stitches. And that's going to keep it following all the way to the end so it's easy to attach to uh, our pumpkin. So into our first chain right here, we're basically doing all of the stitches that we did on the first half backwards all the way to the end. So we're going to start with that first one. We're going to go under that under our tail end loop into that back loop of our next stitch and do a single crochet. Just one single crochet. So we pull through. Make sure this tail end is placed over the two loops on the hook and the end attached to the yarn like that. Yarn over and pull through two. Okay, we're just ignoring this, pretending it's not there, and do stitches around it. Okay, so our first stitch is done, single crochet one. Let's go ahead and fold it over a little bit. Next stitch is a half double crochet, so we yarn over, 
go into the next stitch. Remember, it's the back loop right here, furthest from us. Make sure to go under our tail end, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through all three loops for a half double crochet. Next, we want a double crochet, yarn over, go into the chain's back loop, yarn over again, pull through, going over this tail end, yarn over, pull through just two, one, two, yarn over again, pull through another two, one, and two. Okay, next we want a triple crochet, yarn over twice, one, two, into the next stitch right here, yarn over, pull through, going over this tail, yarn over, pull through two, one, two, yarn over, pull through another two, one, two, yarn over, and pull through the last two, one, and two. Okay, now we're gonna do uh, our next point. So we wanna do another mini pico. Chain two, one, two. Skip the first chain, work into that back loop on the second chain from the hook right here. Boop. Slip stitch one, yarn over and pull it through, and then through like that. Next, we're gonna do another triple crochet. Yarn over twice, one and two. Go into the next stitch right here. Yarn over and pull it through. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Next, we'll do a double crochet. Yarn over once, into the next stitch. Yarn over and pull through. Again, we're still working around our tail end. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Next, we want another triple crochet. So we yarn over twice. One, two. Next chain's right here. Oops, let's try that again. Next chain's right here. There we go. That one was giving me a little trouble. Yarn over and pull it through, and then all the way through. Yarn over two. Yarn over two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay. Next, we want another point. So we do our next mini pico, chain two, one, two. Skip the first one, slip stitch into the back loop of the second chain from the hook. Look at those. That's our last point. Now to get to the end, we want to do two double or two triple crochets and then a double crochet, and then we're going to do something fancy at the very end. So first two triple crochets, yarn over twice, into the next chain right here. Yarn over, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. There's our first triple crochet. Now we want another one after that. Yarn over twice, another triple crochet right here. Yarn over, pull through, and then pull through two, two, two. Okay, last one. We want to double crochet in this last one. Yarn over once. Go into this next chain. Pull through. Pull through two. Pull through two for our last double crochet. To finish up this leaf, we're going to chain two. We can actually leave this tail end now. Chain two. One, two, and then working into that same chain that you worked uh, that last double crochet in, you can see the last hole right there. Go into that last one, yarn over and slip stitch one. Now we can cut the yarn. You don't need that long of an end. That's about, that's actually more than long enough. Pull it all the way through and then go back into that same last stitch that you worked into right here and just pull that tail end through that last stitch again. And it's gonna create kind of a little rounded end there for your leaf. And now you have a little tiny leaf. So now we just need to attach this to the top of your piece like that. I always like to attach it on the opposite side of the vine. And this is really very easy to attach because you already have your two ends ready. The first thing I like to do is take our smaller of the two tail ends and thread that on a needle. 
will go through just one stitch somewhere right here and come out through a random stitch on the side of the pumpkin. Now we can thread this other longer end. And you can just go through an adjacent stitch from where you went in, so like right here, and then just come out through the other tail end and double knot it together. But if you want a super secure uh, leaf, if you're a little worried about that coming loose, come out through a stitch somewhere uh, further down on the pumpkin, like that. Then come out through the base of the pumpkin and then out, or I mean, of the leaf, and then out through the side of it like that. So we're just basically securing it one stitch more. Pull everything a little tighter. Go through the same stitch you just came out of like that, and then out through where the other tail end is like so. And now we're just gonna pull everything a little tighter. Don't pull this too tight, this other tail end too tight. As you can see, it pulls our entire leaf close. So just kind of like keep it somewhat loose. Pull this other end tight. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then we could just double knot these two ends on the inside right here. So one and two like that. Cut it nice and short right here and then squish our piece so that that end just gets hidden on to the inside of our pumpkin. Let's fix this vine one more time. There we go. Beautiful, look at that. Oh my gosh, I love this pattern. All right, well there you go. You have a crocheted pumpkin. Let's see all the sides of it. Here's what it looks like on the bottom. A little messy, but whatever. You're not seeing that anyhow. You're only seeing the top and the sides. Thank you so much for crocheting this pattern along with me. If you like this video, please prove it by liking and subscribing down below. You can share your project with us on Instagram by using hashtag club crochet, or you can tag us. We're at club dot crochet. Um, you can also check out our discord channel. It's a great place to share your projects there too. And if you really like what's going on here, please, please, please consider a club crochet membership. Members get you access to all of our library of tutorials. As you can see here, we have a lot of different kinds of Halloween patterns. Um, I come out with new patterns every single month. Uh, but if you really want to check out some more Halloween patterns, I highly suggest you check out our finger puppet Amy Gurumi that are really, really quick to make. You can make these in very, like less than 30 minutes. Um, it does take a lot of color changes, but they're really fun to make. Uh, so there's those ones. We have a bunch of different kinds of ghosts that you can crochet. Let me know if you can tell what kind of ghosts of these two are. Uh, we got a little bat. Actually, these are our hanging bat patterns. This is a free tutorial and it comes with a little magnet so that you can make it hanging upside down. We have a bunch more of Halloween patterns just like that. Uh, check them out. You can find them at clubcrochet.com slash Halloween. And with a Club Crochet membership, you get access to all of them um, without having to purchase any of them. However, a lot of these are free, like the ghost and the hanging bat. Uh, and yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much again for crocheting this with me. Pasta la pizza and happy hooking. I'll see you soon. Bye.